Saurabh. Hey Saurabh, how are you? Hi Divya, doing well, how are you? I'm good too. Thanks for joining me today for our Simplest Talk series, a set of conversations where we candidly speak to the leaders around various organization, leadership and business oriented subjects. So our today's topic is very interesting and relevant to the current time, that is work-life balance. We will be talking about the meaning and aspects of the work-life balance in the changing times and its future. But before we start a conversation, Saurabh, can you quickly introduce yourself to our audience? Sure, thanks, Divya. Uh, so I'm Saurabh Singhvi, and I've been with Simpress for about eight and a half years now. Uh, I joined the Vistaprint business unit within Simpress. Uh, and as I joined, I was responsible for the developing and growth of the graphic design team uh, for Vistaprint. Uh, also known as the Graphic Services Organization or GSO. Now, in this past eight years, uh, the GSO team has been instrumental in helping Vistaprint develop and offer design services to all its customers globally. Uh, more recently, I've moved on from the Vistaprint business unit to join the Simpress India Graphic, Designs Organi Graphic Designing Organization or GSO. Uh, and we are making progress on our audacious mission to help all the Simpress business units uh, with their graphic design needs by enabling them to build teams, uh, you know, graphic design teams across India. Now, as part of the Simpress India GSO team, we are also helping many more Simpress businesses in addition to Vistaprint with our graphic design services. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now within Simpress India. All right, that was interesting. So thank you for introducing yourself. So let's quickly begin our conversation. I would like to kickstart the conversation by asking you first, what is your idea of work-life balance? Yeah, so for me, work-life balance is more than just, you know, balancing or reducing the number of hours you work. Uh, you know, work-life balance for me is about flexibility and the ability to balance work, so professional life and personal life, uh, and to be able to do meaningful work that makes an impact while continuing to make progress in your personal life. So as long as I'm making progress in both my personal goals and aspirations, as well as making an impact on the work that I do uh, in my professional life. I think for me, that's work-life balance. Fundamentally, it's a question I ask myself all the time, which is, am I compromising one for the other? And as long as I'm not compromising one for the other, I think that's balance for me. Okay. So um, I feel that you mentioned that work and life aren't really separate and are very much connected and intertwined. Yeah. So, um, and also the fact that we at Simpress have adopted the remote first approach now, where do you think we can draw that fine line to, you know, separate work from life? Yeah. So I fundamentally believe that, you know, we have one life uh, and work and personal space are all part of the same life, right? So it's not, I'm not leading two different lives. And so one doesn't necessarily exist without the other. So uh, with that context in mind, it's very difficult to draw a segregation and say, okay, from nine to five, I'm going to be a professional individual. And then the rest of the time I'm going to be personal. It's going to be a mix of both. And so, you know, for me, you know, given the fact that right now with the pandemic and remote working, you know, everybody's forced into this remote working world, the default differentiation of office and workspace has gone away, right? Our homes, which we considered as personal space have become our offices as well. Right. Uh, and so when we are working from our homes, our personal spaces or professional spaces are not different. When they're not different, I think it's important for us to set some practices, some routine uh, in our practices, which allows us to create some sort of a demarcation or differentiation between work and personal life. The more routines you set in, which essentially becomes a part of your habit and keeps telling you, okay, I am now starting to work or this is my workspace or time. Uh, it allows you to draw that line in differentiation, allows you to focus uh, on what you're working at that time, and it makes you more effective. Okay. Well, sort of, I also wonder that, you know, it's been one whole year to the pandemic, and we have been working from our homes and working remotely. And, uh, you know, there has been a lot of conversation going on uh, around work-life balance. And given that it's already been one year, do you think we still need to talk about it? Yeah, so... I think it's an ongoing conversation. I think we still need to talk about it, but I think the nature of the conversation is changing. Uh, if, you, if you look at times before the pandemic and before we were all forced to work remotely or from our homes, the conversation was more focused on how should we do it? 
if work life balance is going to be there when we're working remotely should remote work be there in the first place so those were the type of conversations i think now remote work has become a reality for most people and so the conversation isn't more about if it's more about how now and so how do we effectively continue to work from home right. uh, how do we you know make sure that we can maintain a balance between work and life while we're working from home so i think that conversation has changed but the conversation is still more still important i think it's more now about education and learning uh, than just conversation it's now about understanding the advantages that work from home or remote working brings uh, and also understanding the pitfalls that it may have and then when so successfully embracing the advantages and making the most of it and avoiding the pitfalls i think that's the conversation that we should fo- be focusing on more now i think people will continue to learn and evolve their uh, you know personal styles and habits uh, as they realize the advantages and the pitfalls of this and then hopefully we show up on the other side with more advantages and less pitfalls okay so do you think the new model of work that is either hybrid or fully remote is going to make any difference to our hectic work lives or let's say blurry work life balance well so like any change uh, or any new model that comes into our lives there are both pros and cons uh if you are able to take advantage of the benefits that this model offers and trust me there are a lot of benefits that remote working offers and we are disciplined enough not to fall or you know get into one of these pitfalls that the new model offers then this new way of working is going to be definitely much better uh both for our work life balance but also for throughput and productivity uh in the work that we do however if we don't leverage uh, the advantages uh, in the best possible manner and we embrace some of the pitfalls uh, of the model then it also has the potential to make things difficult and that's why you know as i told earlier i think the education around this is very important i think it for all of us we need to be able to understand what works and what doesn't work we need to understand it's a significant change uh, from the time when we were working from the office Uh, and as long as we can understand the change and mold ourselves and adapt ourselves to this new uh, work style or work life i think it's going to be great for all of us and i have a fundamental belief i'm an eternal optimist so i have a fundamental belief that we as human beings will adapt for the better we have always evolved and adapted and so i think this has huge potential to be uh, you know making our lives better right that's also my uh... one of the most favorite lines to say that you know human beings are the most adaptive species no matter what they they'll just adapt to the situation yeah okay so my next question might sound a bit philosophical but i would still like to ask so do you think that we as humans have started considering work as the whole of life instead of just considering it as a part of life yeah so since you ask a philosophical question let me answer that also in a little bit of a philosophical manner uh and that you know as humans that's what we are like as human beings we're working we we work all the time uh, and so our life in a way is the sum total of our work and a reflection of the work that we've done now true in some cases we would differentiate work that we do in the office and professional uh, career from our personal lives uh and that's when the balancing of the two needs to happen but at the same time if your personal goals and aspirations your passion is essentially aligned to or to a certain extent is fed from the work that you do professionally there is not a lot of difference uh, and so it's one life uh, you know you want to find a balance between the two but at the same time if you are able to consistently ensure there is alignment uh, there is connection and your passion is being fed by some of the work that you're doing it it won't really matter uh, what will matter is that you're still finding purpose you're still finding meaningfulness in what you're doing uh, you're getting satisfaction uh, and I, in my opinion that's the ideal work life balance then you don't have to segregate two parts of your life and say okay this is my work which is separate from my life ideally that doesn't work well at least in my opinion so i continue to encourage people that i talk to and i'll continue to encourage everyone is to to work, continuously work on finding meaning uh, in the work that they're doing you know continuously evaluate if the work that we do feeds into our passion uh, or not and if if as you continuously evaluate if you keep finding more often that your work isn't necessarily feeding into your passion it's time to reevaluate uh, if you have the focus in the right place and are you focusing on the right thing in work uh, but as long as you're able to find that 
honestly, it doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. Uh, and you'll definitely find satisfaction and happiness in what you're doing. It gives me another topic to speak to you again about the you know, meaningful work, what meaningful work really is. But I think I'll pick it up next time. Okay, so um, I would just like to conclude the conversation with your brief thoughts on the future of work. What do you think about um, where we will be in, let's say, another couple of years or so? Yeah, so predicting the future is very difficult. But if nothing else, uh, I, I fundamentally believe uh, in a couple of years, working remotely is going to be more of a norm than the exception. So about a year ago, as I said, you know, it wasn't the norm. Not everybody was working remotely. If you ask me, many organizations were still offering remote working as a benefit uh, to a few, and it was not the default option for people. Right. I think in a couple of years, that will change and it will become a basic expectation for most organizations. I think another thing that will change for sure, uh, in my opinion, is the typical uh, nine to five job, right? So this notion of a nine to five job or whatever a standard shift job is going to become more and more obsolete. Now it may exist in some pockets where, you know, that's the need of the hour, but in many cases where it's not required, but it's still the norm is going to go away. And we're going to see a lot more flexibility in work schedules and the way people work uh, as we move into this new era of, uh, you know, work, uh, work life, work styles. I also feel that while remote working is going to be the norm, uh, we as humans still crave this human interaction and contact and connect. I don't think that's going away. I'm not saying that in the future, we're not going to connect with each other. We're not going to talk or meet people and you know uh, catch over a cup of coffee or whatever. That's all going to happen. Uh, but the basic premise that work can only happen in a you know, designated office space is going to go away. Right. Okay. I think uh, let's put an end here. So I would just like to thank you for taking out time for this conversation. I, I genuinely loved it, especially because the topic is very close to my heart and I keep talking to my colleagues about it whenever I see them working beyond a certain point of time. I feel why, why there's no work-life balance. So I think this was quite enlightening for me as well. And uh, I hope it helps people out there as well. So I would just like to thank our audience as well for watching this and uh, yeah, we'll be soon back with another interesting topic. Till then, take care. Thank, thank you, Divya. So much. Thank you, Divya, for uh, hosting this conversation. It was very uh, exciting for me as well. Thank you. My pleasure.